for three million years. This prehistoric beast has thrived by eating anything and everything that crosses its path. The Nile crocodile, one of the world's great predators, seen like it's never been seen before. From the inside out, through the eyes of Eye Predator. When a Nile crocodile launches out of the water and clamps onto its prey, there's virtually no escape. His 65 teeth are connected to some of the strongest jaws on the planet producing a bone-crushing 1.1 metric tons of bite force. For its size, a bite more powerful than a great white shark. But unlike a great white shark, a crocodile doesn't tear its prey apart alive. It uses its powerful jaws to pull prey underwater long enough to drown it. These jaws, able to overpower a panicked 225 kilogram animal, represent some of nature's most advanced biomechanical engineering. Fast twitch muscles give all animals, including cheetahs, great white sharks, and humans, quick bursts of speed and strength. But this croc has super fast twitch muscles in his jaws which generates 65% more force than a normal fast twitch muscle. And with the hinge point of his jaw at the back of his skull, it increases his jaw's length, allowing him to generate more speed when he clamps it shut. His snap is a lightning fast nine meters per second, nearly four times faster then a rattlesnake strike. But while many of the crocs feast on their prey, others pass on the action. It's not always about the next meal. Sometimes it's about the next generation. This mother crocodile will spend the next three months focusing solely on her children. She won't stray far, if at all, from her nest of 40 incubating eggs. One day ago, she caught a five kilogram tilapia, which yielded her 10,000 calories. But that won't last long. Given that in the last six weeks, she's been expending 5,100 calories per day. Producing these 40 eggs, a process called yoking, is the most energy consuming task this mother crocodile will ever undertake. Especially considering that each egg contains food for her hatchlings. Watching over her nest, she may fall into energy debt. To survive, she'll need to dip into the fat reserves stored in her abdomen, behind her front legs, and even at the base of her tail.
high-pitched calls alert her that her eggs are hatching. All 40 of them. But for many of these hatchlings, the first moments of their lives are their last. Adult crocodiles sit at the top of the food chain. They have virtually no predators of their own. But when they're born, they're actually at the bottom of the food chain. If these newborns are going to survive, their mother needs to get them out of harm's way. She'll do this by transporting them in her mouth. She has a band of cartilage in her jaw that allows her to lock her jaws in place at any stage of her bite so she can adjust the tension like the cables on a suspension bridge. She can even lock her mouth open just two inches wide, allowing her to carry 20 babies at a time without accidentally biting them. But she has to get her nearly 40 hatchlings to a nearby safe pond where they at least have a chance. She'll need to make a few trips. And each time she does, she'll have to leave some of the newborns in danger. Mother picks them up, puts them in the pouch, and walk it back down to the river. And out you go, Junie, and go back and get the rest. While she's down there, there's some predator in there going, <laughs> eating another one. <laughs> it's like, the kids! If only she weren't so consumed with childcare, this starving mother would be near the Morrow River, waiting for her favorite meal to arrive. Each year, one million wildebeest march through Kenya and Tanzania, eating short green grass. They travel up to 1,600 kilometers in search of greener pastures. Why go to all this trouble for grass? Because the million wildebeest need so much of it, going through over 4,000 metric tons every day. And this search for short grass will inevitably force these wildebeest twice a year to cross the Mara River where the crocodiles are waiting. You're sitting up on a riverbank, and suddenly your belly literally starts to vibrate. And the sound of a million hooves coming towards you. rumbling gets louder and louder. But when they get to the river, 
the wildebeest don't plunge right in. After weeks on the move, they're dehydrated. The first thing they want is a drink. And the ones ten deep back there are going, Grr. let me through, I'm thirsty. They're so desperate for a drink, they ignore the fact that just a few meters from their noses, the crocodiles are lurking. Crocodile is a perfect camouflage animal. If you look at a crocodile's head when he's in the water, all you see is half an inch of nostril and an eyeball. Everything else is underwater. He can submerge completely and silently by simply expelling some of the air in his large lungs. And like a submarine with senses, he's built to operate underwater. Flaps protect his ears, nose, and throat. And a thin, transparent membrane covers his eyes. The croc is a close-in assassin. He creeps toward his prey and sits tight. He's waiting for a wildebeest to come into his kill radius, two meters away. Outside two meters, his lunge will probably be unsuccessful. Inside two meters is another story. this croc explode out of the water at 12 meters per second. Serrated scales increase the surface area in contact with the water. For the croc, that means smoother sailing. His rear legs work like pistons, providing just enough of a boost to propel him off the shallow river bottom. But the real power comes from his undulating muscular tail, half the length of his body, accelerating him towards his prey, faster than a jet plane. So in the blink of an eye, his jaws are right where he wants them, ready to attack. The feeding begins. This croc's stealth hunting leads to a huge caloric payday. A meal with over 50,000 calories. But back at the hiding pool, this mother croc is near the end of her fat reserves. Producing eggs and protecting her young is tremendously energy depleting. Each day without food costs this mother croc another 1,200 calories. What's worse, after starting with 40 hatchlings, only 12 are left. But even at a month old, 
Unparalleled adversity can't keep them from what nature intended. To hunt and kill, right from the get-go. Anything that's small enough to get their head or, or their jaws around and moves, they're gonna go for it. Insects, small frogs, small fish, they're just gonna snap at it. Growing hatchlings must eat 5% of their own weight each week. And even at two weeks old, they already know a maneuver that will help them eat much larger prey. The death roll. It's the same technique this adult crocodile on the Mara River needs to dismember the wildebeest he just killed. One of the animals will grab hold, another one will start twisting or body rolling. You'll sometimes have two crocodiles twist in opposite directions till they rip a piece of meat off in half, and each one will swallow it and they'll come back in. With no hands, the crocs don't have enough leverage to tear the wildebeest apart. So spinning once, twice, or sometimes even three times around their own axis, they generate more than 200 kilograms of force, creating the torque and shearing force necessary to rip off chunks of wildebeest. But dismemberment is only half the battle. His mouth and jaws make for a deadly grasp, but he can't actually chew. His jaw won't move sideways. So this predator has to swallow huge pieces whole. And this puts an enormous strain on his digestive system. But his stomach is specially designed to process these massive slabs of meat. Food goes through his esophagus and drops down into an area of his stomach filled with small stones that he has swallowed. They tumble and grind the wildebeest parts. Bones, tendons, horns, hooves, whatever it is, it gets broken down. Then, the smaller pieces mix with high concentrations of hydrochloric acid. Acidic enough to corrode metal. But to protect his own stomach, he secretes an alkaline solution, a base, which neutralizes the acid. Hence, the wildebeest is digested, but not the crocodile himself. It's an amazing animal. He'll turn a two and a half foot leg into a six inch turd in about two weeks. Say he gets part of your leg. He can swallow a whole leg, long ways. Bloop, down it goes, straight down through the gullet, shoe, socks, everything goes into the stomach. In the weeks of the wildebeest migration across the Mara, one crocodile can actually consume enough wildebeest meat to sustain it for as long as two years. This is important because two weeks after they arrive, the wildebeest are gone. And leaner times may be coming. This mother croc, her hatchlings already dying at an alarming rate, has a new problem. The hiding pool is evaporating. To survive, she and her offspring will have to find a new pond, which means traveling over land. For a young crocodile, a land voyage is a dangerous one. So this mother waits until the cover of night to take her babies on the most dangerous trip of their young lives. They only have to move 160 meters, 
it'll take them less than five minutes. But that's a long time with hungry predators at every turn. Baby crocodiles are crossing those land areas, they become very vulnerable to, to other species that are going to eat them. Fortunately, the whole family makes it to a new watering hole unharmed. But their troubles aren't over. There's one predator these babies may not be able to avoid. A fearsome hunter, more than 3,000 times their size. The predator they least expect. Their own mother. How can she eat one of her own babies that she's worked so hard to protect? Eating her young is a last resort. She needs the energy to keep herself alive so she can protect the rest of her offspring. This mother will eat anything she can just to survive. The crocodiles at the river crossing have been having the feast of their lives, having each consumed on average more than 150,000 calories in less than two weeks. This isn't really gluttony. More like practicality. They have to prepare for long stretches without a good meal. By digging a hole into a riverbank, this croc crawls deep inside where it's cool and dark. Then, the result of unique biological engineering, he can slow his body down. It may seem like he's near death, but the crocodile is temporarily in standby mode. It's called estivation. It's like when you turn on your car engine, you just want to listen to the radio, just give it the half turn, and that's it. And that's all the croc needs. In this state, he needs very little energy to survive and very little oxygen either. He breathes through oversized, efficient lungs, and he does it episodically, as little as a breath or two every couple minutes. His body temperature lowers to match that of his environment. Underground, it drops 15 degrees or more. And this drop drastically slows his metabolism, including his heart, which does something truly extraordinary, slowing from 40 beats per minute to five. And he can stay that way for a year. Like hibernation in mammals, estivation allows him to conserve power until he really needs it. While these crocs lay in wait, this mother makes a difficult choice. She needs to leave her babies. Even though they've grown 10 centimeters in the four months she's watched over them, 
they're still at the mercy of other bigger predators. But this mother needs to find food to get ready for the next mating season. It's time for the 11 remaining hatchlings to fend for themselves. years pass. During that period, the mother croc mates 10 more times. cycle spans six months from the moment she conceives to when she leaves her hatchlings to fend for themselves. It's during the other six months of the year that she builds up the fat reserve she'll need to carry her through each harrowing cycle. But during that time, the hatchlings the mother croc took such pains to protect have not fared so well, having dwindled to just one. The sole survivor from that first clutch was a male who grew about 30 centimeters per year and is now almost three meters long. He's lived to this point off fish, small animals, and remnants from the kills of others. As he gets bigger though, so does his appetite. He's getting a little big just to sustain himself on birds, maybe a rodent or a lizard. He's gonna need that large mammal. He's gonna need those calories to sustain his growing body. The wildebeests are coming. And even if he has to share one with five other crocs, it means a whopping 50,000 calories five times more than he'd get from a large fish. But it's a transition that won't be easy. There's a certain pecking order. The largest animals are gonna come in first and feed. He has to also remember he's competing with adults. If he doesn't respect the territory and doesn't get out of the way, they'll kill him. Amazingly, crocodiles never stop growing. So as the youngest crocodile in the river, he's likely also the smallest. Going up against the large adults, there's no telling what could happen. He finds himself surrounded by others twice his size. This is prime real estate. This is for the big boys only. But eventually, he can take his place up there with the big boys. But at this point, the big male will kill him. matched by the larger male. Already dipping into his fat reserves, he swims downriver, looking for a less competitive spot. But all he finds is more competition. So he leaves the Mara River entirely. Four 
four hours later, he's still crossing the sun-scorched savanna in search of a new home. Back at the Mara, the wildebeests are arriving. At first, they stand at the river's edge, leaning in to quench their thirst. They can't escape the inevitable, but they can postpone it. They have to cross the river to get to the grazing on the other side. They know what's in the water. And they'll pile up, and they'll pile up, and they'll pile up behind until it's almost like the balloon is going to burst. And then as one, they go, ah, here we go. Here we go. And then somebody's going to go, I can't take it, and just jump in. You get. A thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand animals pouring across this hundred yard stretch of river. The wildebeests don't have many defenses against the crocs, but one of them is sheer numbers. Wildebeest has adapted over millions of years to be a, a herding animal. And the reason for that is safety in numbers. You got a lot better shot of making it to the other side if there's a thousand other wildebeests with you. Some of the wildebeests get picked off by the 30 waiting crocs, while most get by. But the river's current throws the plunging herd off course. They miss their exit point. And then they panic. Their hooves have no traction in the mud, and hundreds of them are trampled as they stumble down the steep and slippery embankment. These crocodiles are perfectly engineered stealth hunters. But they don't need to hunt this prey at all. The wildebeests have made a lethal error and are sitting ducks. Body count is massive. So huge that where the river narrows, there's a dam of wildebeest parts. Fewer than 1% of wildebeests are lost during this crossing. But that still numbers into the hundreds. If the young crocodile had just bided his time, he could have shared in the overflow of wildebeest. And he would have easily eaten as much as the others. But now, he's tired and starving, trying to reach the next watering hole. His mistake may turn out to be a fatal one. As he trudges on, he picks up the scent of rotting carcass. But it gives him no indication of where he'll find water. And the sun blazes high overhead. A 
we often think of reptiles as basking in the sun and being sun lovers. But if he gets too hot, he'll overheat and he'll die. On the verge of overheating, he sees something in the distance. Ahead, a lioness eats a rotting hippo carcass right next to a watering hole. He's starving, but more importantly, he needs to get into the water to cool off. So he can only watch as a pride of lions feast on the tantalizing carcass. By the time his temperature is back to normal, there's nothing left but a few dry bones. So far, his new watering hole has yielded nothing. He's about to move on when he picks up an unmistakable disturbance in the murky water. He can't see it, but something's out there, some kind of prey. He knows this because he has hundreds of tiny sensors, like beard stubble, running the length of his body, particularly near his jaws, directly connected by nerves to his brain. A ripple hits a crocodile's jaws, and the croc can immediately calculate which side felt it more strongly and in what proportion. And if that ripple source is close enough, and it's a prey item, in 200 milliseconds, twice as fast as the blink of an eye, it triggers a lunge and a snap. But just before the source comes into range, a sound startles him. It's a mother croc diving into the water, headed straight for him. Suddenly, the source of those ripples becomes clear. A two-day-old baby crocodile swims less than a meter away. 10 years ago, he was the hatchling being threatened by every predator in the swamp. Now, the shoe is on the other foot. But the mother croc, larger than the juvenile male, springs to her hatchling's defense. She's protecting them all the time, and she's very, very aggressive. Female will be all over him like a cheap suit. Smaller than the mother croc who's taken over this pool, he has no choice but to get away as fast as he can and find another pool to call home. He has to settle for a very small one, a watering hole he has all to himself. But if it doesn't attract any big prey, he may not survive. It's been two weeks, and no large prey items have even come close to this watering hole. Each day, he's expending more than 1,200 calories. And he doesn't have enough energy to make it to yet another watering hole. The young 
croc doesn't figure out how to get something he can actually eat, he's going to get weaker and weaker. He's putting more energy than he has to in order to get his food. And eventually, he's going to get too tired to grab anything even substantial. With the situation desperate, suddenly, the sensors on his jaw pick up something. He can't see through the murky water. But picking up ripples on the surface, his sensors give him very specific information about where the ripples are coming from. He swims closer and peeks his eyes above the water. Two meters away is a 45 kilogram impala. The more than 60,000 calories could keep him alive for four months. But if he blows this opportunity, it could cost him his life. To take this Impala down, he'll need every one of his evolutionary advantages By exhaling just 20% of the air in his lungs and flipping his tail 20 centimeters to the side, he slides silently into his optimal kill radius. His extraordinary stealth gets him into striking range. But if he's gonna take down something 10 times larger than anything he's killed before, it's going to come down to the final launch. Will it be fast enough to surprise this Impala? from his legs, power from his muscular tail, and some of the most bone-crushing jaws on the planet, our young croc has sunk his teeth into the flesh of a large mammal. Finally, this 10-year-old juvenile becomes a full-fledged bull. The 60,000 calories propel him on to his next hunt. And five seasons later, when the wildebeest come, he'll return to the Mara River and take his place next to the older males. By then, his perfectly engineered body will be big enough and strong enough. And after the feast, when the lean times come, to conserve energy, he can drastically slow his body down. After beating the odds, he's now proven why Nile crocodiles are so successful and why they rule the river.